From a gangsta rap to secular motivational rap, a professional BMX bicycle racer for 15 years, with the main goal being to uplift and motivate people through his songs and speakings. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing Hurricane Maine. Wow, wow, what a great introduction, Sensei. Man, I really appreciate that, brother. I really do. I'm honored to be here. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Hurricane. Thanks a lot for joining our, joining our show. I know it's an odd time there, and you took your time to join us. Thanks a lot. Oh, yeah. I wouldn't miss it for the world, brother. You know, I'm, I'm, I just... I just, I'm proud to have this platform that I got, you know, and the, the opportunity to meet people like yourself and Lindy Eldridge mm -hmm. and other people that I've met and done interviews with and people on my show. I'm just honored everyone with everyone that I'm able to meet. So it, even if it was after midnight, <laughs> I still do it. <laughs> just have to take a quick shower to Look alive. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Uh -huh. uh, do, you, do you know that you were being recommended by one of your well-wishers, that is uh, Lindy, who actually recommended you. And uh, if somebody recommends you, you should, uh, you should know that you've been uh, very well recognized and honored by them. And that's the reason why people recommend somebody else. Amen. Amen. You know, and recommendations go a long way. You know, like in in the industry of the work that I do, you know, cause I, I do multiple things, but mm -hmm. I was raised as a painter. Mm -hmm. So I, I paint for my main income to raise my family. I, I paint interior, exterior houses. And that's one of the main thing that paint contractors say mm -hmm. is word of mouth is worth more than any level of advertising. Absolutely. You know, so Lindy to come to you and refer me. Wow. You know, that that's, that's phenomenal. And I love Landy Ford, and wow, I really do. It means a lot, you know, to be Absolutely. referred. Absolutely. I was going through your uh, profile, Hurricane. Uh, why do people call you as Hurricane? And, what, and, and that name came to you at the age of nine, I do believe. So I would right. like to know, number one, why do people call you as Hurricane? Main and number two is what is this all about BMX? Because in, I, I, this is something new to me. Maybe it is there in India. I have no clue about it. But please right. take me through what is BMX? What is that all about? Well, well, basically, I put everything in a nutshell. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, BMX is an abbreviation. It's B comma M, uh, not comma dot M dot X, and it stands for bicycle motor and the X represents a cross. So okay. it's bicycle motocross, almost like cross country, you know, but on, but on bicycles. So what the sport consists of is little 20 inch bicycles, like the bikes you may see at Walmart or your mm -hmm. department stores and everything, yeah. Yeah. except you, they're more high tech, you know, more advanced and everything, but mm -hmm. they're little bikes that most people would say they're kids bikes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we race them around tracks Mm -hmm. uh, like courses with obstacles and mm -hmm. hills that we jump over and hurdle. Now, if you ever watch the Olympic Games, mm -hmm. you'll notice the bicycle sport in the Olympics that mm -hmm. it was inducted into the Olympics in 2008. That mm -hmm. was the first year of it. And is there jumping the big hills and, you know, it's pretty dangerous, mm -hmm. but it's something that I grew up with in my heart. I don't know how far back my older brother, you know, mm -hmm. he, he told me when I was three, I was jumping over obstacles and dirt ramps in, mm -hmm. in the yard and everything. Mm -hmm. So I can't remember. And, and then uh, as I got older, I started liking motorcycle okay. cross country, you know, where they're jumping the hills yeah, and everything. Yeah, yeah. And BMX is a sister sport to that. It's okay. the same as that. As you know that sport, you know my sport. Mm -hmm. Okay. So as I, as I got older, I got into the motorcycles, not doing it, just watching it on TV. Mm -hmm. And... I, the name Hurricane, uh, it was a racer named Bob Hurricane Hanna from the state mm -hmm. of Florida mm -hmm. and here in the U.S. And he was very popular and he was my favorite. So mm -hmm. it rhymed with my name. So I said, oh, I'll be Hurricane Tremaine. Mm -hmm. And that, and you know, I didn't think much about it. It's kids playing. But as I get older and get older, my parents buy me a motorcycle and a BMX bike. Mm -hmm. I would alternate from the two. Mm -hmm. And all the kids in the neighborhood we start calling me Hurricane and it would catch on. So flash all the way till I turned 16. 
I start actually racing BMX bicycles, mm-hmm. you know, the motocross. It was my dream to do it. I've had dreams and like when I'm sleeping, visualizing me doing this and never knew why. But I ended up doing this sport and somehow ironically enough the name hurricane (laughs) carried into the sport Mm -hmm. i wasn't that good in the beginning but i eventually got good and won some titles and got on national teams turned pro made Mm -hmm. money and the hurricane carried all the way (laughs) to where we're at now yeah excellent excellent yeah. So yeah. tell me, tell me, Hurricane, one thing is that leaders are those people who influence others to take action. Okay, so right. the leaders say, now, have you ever influenced or motivated somebody else to do what you are doing today? Yeah, I would say because I'm a firm believer in passing it back to someone mm-hmm. because a lot of times that'll come back around to you. Like if for instance, like if I help a kid in mm-hmm. BMX, mm-hmm. like I have, I've taught seminars and everything, teaching mm-hmm. kids and all, and they get something from that. Because when I was a little kid, I would see those older people that were the stars and everything, and it meant a lot to me, mm-hmm. and it affected the way that I wanted to become in life. Mm-hmm. So I feel like if I represent, first have God as my foundation in, in, in me. Mm-hmm. First off, mm-hmm. one, and then after that, realize that we don't live for the outside; we live for what from within, and mm-hmm. that's where abundance and everything comes from. And mm-hmm. so, and God has designed this world to give. So mm-hmm. I give what I can, you know, teaching skills mm-hmm. or, or you know, trying to influence young people in the right direction, mm-hmm. you know, things like that. You know, just turn them on to to the sport, and I always lead them in a the direction. If somebody just wants to know, they can look me up. They can find me on social media and I'll show them the way to get started. <laughs> uh-huh. Very good. They need to Google BMX. They should Google that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, we got to uh, get that out there in India. Absolutely, ah. absolutely. We're going to do that. We're going to do that. Yeah. And, and Hurricane, here, here's again my, one of my challenging questions is um, uh, when I'm a martial artist, I've been into the martial arts for around 35 plus plus years. Wow. Now, that, that has built me the person I am today, whether it is my leadership quality or the way that I focus, etc. Mm-hmm. If you were asked this question, what are the three things, the takeaways that you get from the BMX and which you are now transferring to the young generation? What are the three benefits of BMX in, in a very positive, as a human being? For me, for me, um, this, like I said, I, I had dreams and visions of it. This is something that I, I can't even describe how passionate I was about this. Mm-hmm. Just maybe like you and your martial arts too. So passionate that we could go out and not do well and we would go home and do our homework to get better. Mm -hmm. to train and get better Mm -hmm. and because we we wanted to make it even though we feel discouraged a lot more than we felt encouraged Mm -hmm. i can relate to any athlete Mm -hmm. you know that's gone this far in their this in their uh sport or whatever Mm -hmm. so what i got from all of the heartaches and all the failures and all the setbacks and struggles to even get gas money to Mm -hmm. get from one place to another and all these struggles Mm -hmm. is i learned that I can take a lot. Mm -hmm. I can take a beating and come back because Mm -hmm. I, and I can win because Mm -hmm. every single time that I failed, I might've failed three or four more times afterwards, Mm -hmm. but eventually I saw success. Mm -hmm. And you know, when we look back on our careers and what we did Mm -hmm. in our sports and everything, Mm -hmm. we, we really, think about the highlights we don't think about those bad times so Mm -hmm. those stand out but i think the bad times are good and necessary to create discipline and i think that's what i got from bmx is a discipline to go go and go out and do something because other people from where i lived didn't do this they didn't Mm -hmm. venture out and chase their dreams Mm -hmm. and and that's what i urge anyone to do is go out and chase your dreams because this world is designed to if you persist at something, you will not be denied. And I got a good story about that word, uh, you will not be denied too, mm-hmm. you know, where God spoke to me. Because that was before God spoke. Can I go into that? I'll go and I'll make it brief. Can I mm-hmm. go into that? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
Okay, the word you won't be denied, the phrase. I've never in my life used that term up until God spoke it to me. Mm -hmm. And the way that he spoke it to me is I was at a race event. I raced pro BMX through the 90s and the early 2000s, but I turned vet pro in the 2000s. So I was veteran pro at the Grand National Race in Kentucky, USA. It was, uh, I mean, people from all over the world. I guess not from India, though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. They don't race BMX there. We got to get it there. But uh, everybody from all over the world was there. All the best people from TV and ever. I was there competing, and I ended up making a long story short. I made it through all of the qualifying rounds. And in BMX, eight bicycles get up on this gate on a starting hill, on a starting gate at one time. And to transfer to the next qualifier, you have to be in the top four. Mm -hmm. So all day long, you're racing at the Grand Nationals. And I got top four and made it all the way to the semifinals. Semifinals consist of eight guys, but two groups of eight guys. Top four out of each group go to the main event, the big show. Mm -hmm. and, so, and so we're on the gate. I'm in my group of eight. The gate drops, I, and, and I'm pedaling down the hill. My foot comes off of the pedal. And for me, my passion, this is like you at the championships of your martial arts. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, some small thing goes wrong in the beginning. So I slipped, I slipped off of the pedal and all of a sudden a voice with a phrase that I've never heard in my life comes into my mind just as clear as we're sitting here talking now. It says, "You," because my heart drops when my foot comes off, my heart drops, I'm going to be hurt. And it says, you won't be denied. That's what it says. You won't be denied. And uh, by the time, because our feet now, get, granted, you know, on a bicycle, you, I know you have regular shoes, not on these. We have shoes with special clips on the bottoms of them where we are attached to the pedals. So if your foot comes off, you got to reattach. So the voice said, you won't be denied. By that time, click, my foot goes back in. I'm in last place, in eighth place. I start pedaling. I get to the first turn. Two guys just out of the blue collide and fall. I go around those guys. Mm -hmm. I'm going down over hills over the next one. Two other guys start zigzagging. They mm -hmm. crash. Mm -hmm. Then I'm in third place. Then I go around. I qualify. I make the main events. I mean, the big hurrah, big celebration. It was just like winning the Super Bowl. And, mm -hmm. and it was phenomenal for me. And that voice, I mean, that was God. And I use that term, you won't be denied, because I always tell myself that, and I tell anyone that they're great. And they're denied as long as they believe in themselves and have God as their foundation. Once you got that, you find the way within what you want to do and build onto the foundation, like building a house one brick at a time. Mm -hmm. May fall down and fail sometime, but learn from your failures. You know, so yeah, that's that story. I, I had to share that though, where God spoke to me, and that meant a lot in my life. <laughs> thank you, thank you for sharing that. Now yeah. let's move on from the BMX. I, I, okay. I do understand that you are. A, a, a into rock and rolls and you are into radio show etc and now you are more right. of a motivational speaker and uh, through your radio show uh, take us more through that yes yes uh well that can kind of go where I, I continue i can continue from the bmx with that because the bmx had to do with that because oh after doing bmx for close to 30 years i kind of made a name for myself so living over here on the east coast of the United States and people on the west coast knew me. And this one guy by the name of Robert Smart, shout out to Robert Smart out there, mm -hmm. <laughs> my brother in Christ. Mm -hmm. he, um, he knew of me from BMX okay. and um, he knew that I could rap. Mm -hmm. He knew that I could do rap music and everything. Mm -hmm. And I, I, was, I got into motivational rap by that time. I only got into it two years ago. Mm -hmm. But um, he heard a song that I wrote mm -hmm. and, and, and with a singer on there. It's called He Chose Me. Mm -hmm. Because I believe by God speaking to me that he chose me to lift people up. Mm -hmm. You know, so because I'm the motivational musician, the musical motivator. You know, and Robert Smart told 
his friend Sam Stewart that owns a radio station called His Hot Radio. It's mm -hmm. an internet radio station that was based out of Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. And so he told him about me. Sam interviewed me. We hit it off just like we are now. And then he plays my song and it goes number one for two months. Mm -hmm. And flash forward two months after that, Sam calls me up. Hey, do you want a radio show? I was like, whoa. And normally I would have said no, but I believe in the law of attraction. I believe in signs. And I, and I said, you know what? I'll do it. Because three years prior to that right there, I told my wife that someday I want to have something, a show, and I want to call it the Hurricane Main Show. Mm -hmm. But I, I thought it would be more of a TV show and comedy, but I never knew. And that's how the, my radio show came about. And that, and I just started, I've been doing radio for a little over a year and a half, right at two years now. Mm -hmm. Wow, great. I love it. I love it. <laughs> great, great. Hurricane Main, you are also into uh, helping people who have the mental thoughts of committing suicide. And it all happened yes. with one of your cousins uh, very yes. recently. Uh, what yep. do you do and what is your plan for the future and how can people contact you in that way? And what do you feel, what, what do you find by doing those things? Well, the thing is, I believe that we're all put here with a purpose. Yep. And if you don't know your purpose, you should find a purpose. Because like I said before, mm -hmm. when you give to the world, the world gives to you. Mm -hmm. A lot of people make the mistake of saying, world, what can you give me? Give me cars, give me houses, give me this and give me that. No, I found my way and I found out that that's not the way. I mm -hmm. found out the way is what can you give. And I've received so much from giving mm -hmm. and, and, it's, and it's been a good life for me. And and thing is, with the, the whole suicide thing, mm -hmm. is I feel like that is my purpose. Mm -hmm. I think that's my sole purpose to use my platform for. Of mm -hmm. course, some people use their platforms that they get for any old crazy reasons. Mm -hmm. I want to use my platform that I'm blessed with for, for good, for uplifting, for informing, for motivating. That's mm -hmm. what I want to do. Mm -hmm. But uh, mm -hmm. I was on a radio show for about a year, mm -hmm. you know, last year, around last May. It was going to be about a year. So um, my cousin... Chance Zachary, he was suffering from bipolar disorder and depression, and uh, but he wasn't moping around. You know, I, I just didn't really notice the signs or pay much attention. But he ended up being overtaken by depression and committing suicide two days before his birthday mm -hmm. last May mm -hmm. and last year. And uh, when that happened, it really devastated our family his dad is my first cousin of whom i it was a year uh, about a year and a half older than me so we grew up together so that's who i hurt for the most his his dad so i went to his dad just a couple days after it happened or really after the funeral and i said you know i was driving in my truck the other day actually actually i'm sorry since since it wasn't that many days Actually, it was like three days after it happened. I was driving on a Saturday to a BMX race. It's a benefit for a friend of mine whose dad died. They have a memorial race. So I was going to be there. And uh, on the way there, so I was praying to God and I was crying. I had been crying for days at this point, but I had told my friend I would come. So um, I was crying and I said, God, what can I do? Because every time something happens on my show, I feel like this platform, I have to say something. I get this chill and I have to do it just like with the police shootings here in America mm -hmm. and, and the different thing, the Black Lives Matter. I have, to, I have to touch on those. So with this happening, I had to do something. So I was riding in my truck praying and all of a sudden it comes to me just like the other voice, you won't be denied. Give life a chance. And, that, and his name is Chance. I was like, that's it. That's it. I don't have much money. I don't have much of anything. But I'm going to make this happen to where I, I, I have something in his name to memorialize him. But I got to get his dad's permission first. So I go to his dad and his dad's like, give me time. I'll let you know. Flash all the way to January of 2018. Mm -hmm. It takes this long to decide. And it's hard to get something together between January and May when you haven't started. 
Mm-hmm. But he called me up after January 1st, and he said, he calls me cuz. He's like, cuz, go ahead and do it. Mm-hmm. That's all he said. That, and, and I knew what he was talking about. I was like, okay, it's on. It's on now. And that's when I hit the phone, started getting to all my connections. And because what I was trying to put together is the first annual Hurricane Maine Give Life a Chance in memory of Chance Zachary. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to donate money to a nonprofit organization. So that because those nonprofits, I mean, those mental health organizations, they have a hard time getting funding to go around and talk to people and counsel people and do things. So this was my way to get to contribute to give to them by having this event. So I'm going to have t-shirts posted and you know, I'll put some links on your site once I get sure. them all done and uh, t- with give life a chance on them. And it's to bring awareness because we got to stop asking why did this person or a family member commit suicide, but what can we do to prevent suicide? You know, so that's my thing. That's my thing. I'm not making money off of it. I'm not making anything, and I and I intend to continue this to well after I'm gone from this earth, you know, mm-hmm. through my kids that I, I bring up and, and wanting to give, you know, wanting to give to people. And, that like, I got a shirt on now. I don't know if you can see it. My mm-hmm. daughter is Livingstone mm-hmm. College, and mm-hmm. that's in North Carolina. My daughter, Zaria, she attends there, and I got another daughter attends Valdosta State here in Georgia. But she's going to be singing on a song with me called grateful that we're going to be recording soon. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, all of my music is just like I'm talking now. You can hear me clearly on the music and it's motivating, but it's music, you know, and it's got messages in there because I've been through so much in life, you know, so many ups and downs, you know, and God's brought me here with you. So I'm so, so pleased and honored, you know, but give life a chance. That's right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Hurricane Maine, if, if you are given one minute mm-hmm. and you, you're being asked to sing a song mm-hmm. from your heart. Sing a song? <laughs> yeah. I can't sing. Maybe rap a song. <laughs> That's one. Okay, sing, rap, whatever you can do. You've got 60 seconds. Your time starts now. It's your boy Hurricane Zane, death to the Mizane. I made a change in my life, let me explain. Imagine being young to see you as a threat. Intimidated by your color and how you dress. Got my pants down, hoodie over, step wrong, it's over. Hardcore mind before the outside. Wasn't raised this way, thinking of getting high. Serving fiends every time I see them walk by. I think back, man, was it this bad? I think the pattern started way back before my dad, before his dad, like back in slavery. Oppression started, chain reaction ended up with me. And now they poison us, they show us glamorous. Selling dope and so on, like we simple bucks. They're trying to poison in the struggle, man. <laughs> 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 <laughs>